Okay, so we're at Strong Point Hillman, as it was codenamed on D-Day. This is the underground bunker position on the high ground about three miles inland from the coast, which was attacked by the Suffolk Regiment. They approached from up this road here, came up there from the sea, but before they even got near the place they came into heavy fire and had one heck of a fight to capture this place. See why Hillman's positioned here. If we look towards the east, that's down towards Weestrom, and then across towards Pegasus Bridge, that's a few miles in that direction, commands all the terrain hereabouts. When I wrote my book Crucible of Fate, I introduced an imaginary position called Point 113 or the Crucible, and that's what I based it on, that wooded area up on the hill there. That's where I imagined it was. This is the, uh, the main bunker at Hillman, the command bunker, the entry point I'm assuming. And we can actually have a look at the inside of what was called the Tobruk position. You see that circular hole? These were a fairly common defensive structure. Just enough room for one person to look out the cupola with a weapon, normally a machine gun, and survey the area around about. Obviously on the day, none of these trees would have been here, this would have all been cleared, so the arc of fire was wide open. But you can see from this position, you get a good sweep of fire. So here we are, we're now on the surface of Strong Point Hillman, just walking across. Uh, there's a couple of obstacles here that have been left from the period, two classic ones tetrahedon which is a sort of metal post bolted together and then you've got this kind of pyramid affair made out of concrete reinforced with metal bars inside obviously these would have been on the beaches and also used on strong points like this to channel armour and infantry into the killing areas so this appears to be one of the the forward bunkers of Hillman got the steps here that takes us down into the rear of it quite an extensive bunker system by the looks a lot bigger than I imagined it might be we have here another Tobruk position just here oh look at that we can still see the range card inside we just look in here on the wall you've got the names of the villages and the distances on there that's a range card for the soldier on sentry here so that he could uh, give indication and direction to people below interesting little original feature that and I'm guessing that underneath this bunker gives you access to this cupola here which appears to be in the prime firing position let's just go up and have a look see what the arc of fire is like but it looks pretty impressive from here Oh yeah, you can see straight away, perfectly positioned. So if we just sit ourselves down here, it looks like some kind of ventilation or escape hatch there. But this is the cupola, look at that field of fire. Uh, there appears to be another position over there on the left, so it's got interlocking and overlapping arcs of fire. And look at that, what a sweeping view it's got. Machine gun here can just mow down anything trying to come across that open ground. Very well sighted and it can see for miles. 
all the way along to towards St Auburn Samir which is over at the far side of uh, Juno Beach Duvras La Deliberande is over there as well in the distance so we're going down into the main bunker complex behind the cupola uh, you've got a very narrow fire trench here, classic fire trench just tall enough for someone to go along and stand up uh, and I'm guessing actually just from the orientation of this that this was to cover that right flank to cover the road so even inside the position the arcs of fire are interlocking and overlapping classic defensive layout let's go back down into the main bunker area And again, we've got what's called here in French an observation post, which it could have been, but of course, it's essentially another Tobruk Cupola. There we go, look, we've got the range card all the way around the outside, telling me where everything is. We've even got church spires on there marked, crosses, church towers, it's all there. And this is what looks like a speaking tube, like you get on ships. Now looking at the angle here, over to the, the forward left, towards the, the west, you haven't got much of a view because the cupola's in the way, but again, this is perfectly sighted to cover the right hand side of the position along there. And of course, if you do come down here to clear this position out, you come round the corner and you look straight at that. There's a firing port there right at the far end for a machine gun or a rifle covering straight up this alleyway. So a nasty surprise for you if you come round this corner. There he is, look low down. Well, you're not expecting him. Ah, a water tank. Drinking water, I think that says. So it's got its own water supply. An access point down there. There are ladders to climb down. I don't know where they go. And we've got some more steps that take us deep down. So I think we'll explore. Again, there's another firing port there. So you can see who's coming in, he can defend the place. Got a steel door here. Looks like some kind of generator in there. I think we'll go back round into the main bunker and see. These are your proper bunkers. Certainly are. Definitely one of the best kept secrets of Normandy, this. Because it's away from the beaches, I'm not sure that many people would spot it. Okay, let's go down, see who's around. Can hear other people exploring. Observation slits there. Look at the size of these doors. It's a pretty robust metal door, that. Slight step, another armoured door. Whoa, look at this. This is the inside of Hillman. Command bunker. Wow, look at that. This has got to be the Commandant's office. It is indeed. Colonel Krug. There's his typist desk. And there, I think, is the inside of the cupola. 
with a cage floor. So that's how you get to the defensive position there, one of the main firing posts in the bunker system. Pretty impressive in here, I have to say. And this costs nothing to come in. You can just come and walk in here when it's open. Okay, so we're in a different part of the bunker now. Bunk beds here. I have to say, it's, um, it's a bit cosy than I expected it to be. I'm sure it didn't feel cosy on the day with all the gunfire outside. But they're actually quite a sophisticated set of communications here. Got the field telephones there, the clocks, the alarms. So it was quite an e extensive command bunker. Lots of thought gone into this. It wasn't just a, a lump of concrete with some people thrown inside. With all the radios. All this wiring here. Yeah, a really extensive network of bunkers and tunnels here. I'm very impressed with it actually, it's more than I thought it would be. Got some more accommodation through here. Again, all sealed with steel doors. Another restroom for, for three men. I'm sort of guessing that people were probably hot bunking here so that they could get more people in. So when you were on duty, you had a bed. When you were on duty, someone else took it, I'm guessing. Now some more beds here. Another three tiers. Okay, so we've now got another extensive bunker system here. There's a communication trench with the steps down into it, uh, which bring you down along here. And there's some concrete steps here as well. And it brings you down into a very similar entry point to the bunker we've just seen. This apparently is Command Post B. Uh, has a very similar layout at the back here. You've got the uh, Tobruk Coppola there, the doorway into it. Again, you've got the little corridor down to the entry point you've got the little firing port at the end so you can fire at anybody coming down here to try and attack you from the rear and it appears to be linked to the second cupola over here which appears to be the the forward left cupola that covers the forward left of the position now as you can see this cupola is actually depressed into the ground at the moment uh, i'm assuming when it's elevated there would have been a firing aperture in there uh, and that would have given you the opportunity to cover that road over there. You can see a car driving along it, which is the main road between Hermanville, Colville, Montgomery, which is down here. This would have been the main road to Carn. Over that way, over Perrier's Ridge and towards Carn. So this position covered the forward left-hand side of the the complex and again look at the arcs of fire there right across the front of the village and right across the front of the forward right cupola over here we've got what appears to be another bunker system here right near the road on the forward right hand side of the position so we'll we'll have a look see where this takes us all right this is interesting Quite an extensive set of rooms in here. This looks like uh, accommodation. In fact, there are pots and pans hanging up on the back wall there, beyond the table. So this was obviously a shelter position rather than a fire position. Not sure if this is half finished or slightly demolished, but there's the main road. So this is obviously one of the entry points into the, the position.
Yeah, it's got the feel of accommodation, I think. Okay, let's go back up on the top and explore some more. I have to say, this is probably one of the best bits of preserved fortification in Normandy we've seen so far. And gives you probably the greatest sense of what it must have been like to be sat here watching the invasion force, which is out there on the sea. The sea is very difficult to spot this morning because of the mist and the weather, but it, it's just there beyond the, the dark line on the horizon. But it also gives you an idea of what it must have been like to be a British soldier or a tank crew trying to come across this open ground and up through the villages, so exposed to the defenders on this ridge. All right, here we go. The buildings we've just seen was the cookhouse which makes sense, hence the table and chairs and the cooking utensils. I suppose it makes sense it was near the road to get supplies there, nice and easy. Okay, so uh, that's us on Strong Point Hillman and this is the end of our visit to Normandy for the time being. Over the last few days we've, we've been to all the beaches, we've been to the bridges, we've been to the town squares, we've had a good look around and I've, I've never ceased to be amazed at the lie of the land, the terrain, the nature of what had to be done here on the 6th of June 1944. I think in terms of looking at what's been left behind, uh, what's been preserved, Hillman is, is one of the better places. It, it's completely free of charge and it's a little bit out of the way, but if you come here, it's a fascinating place to explore. Uh, and it's been preserved through the, the goodwill of several local French families, which I think is fantastic. It's now been gifted to the, the Suffolk Regiment or the the people that are the ancestors of the Suffolk Regiment um, and it's just a little piece of England here. I think the great thing about it is that when you stand here on the ridge looking back towards the coast you get to understand that the vast nature of this operation. You know if we, we turn around and we look we're looking down on Sword Beach and across to Juneau and beyond that you've got Gold and Omaha and then Utah in the distance. Uh, it's just a vast piece of, of countryside uh, and the events that played out here 75 years ago were, were just immense, both in terms of their, their scale at the time and what it meant for, for modern history, the world that it's left behind for us. Uh, and yeah, it's hard to believe that standing here in this lovely, peaceful part of the French countryside, which has been preserved beautifully, it's hard to believe that 75 years ago this was pretty much devoid of grass, it was covered in shell holes, uh, barbed wire obstacles and there was tracers zipping across right where I'm standing as the Suffolks tried to capture this place. So yeah, again, uh, another beautiful piece of countryside but we should always remember brave men died here and once upon a time they died all the way across that countryside that we can see in the distance. We should never forget. <laughs>